Hi folks, so today we are going to be talking about coastal processes. We've introduced the module, we have, um, sorry I'm just starting my timer, uh, we've talked about waves, we've talked about tides, um, we've had a little chance to, to think about those. I sent you some worksheets and a Kahoot where you can kind of revise and practice what we've done. This is a new topic. So coastal processes, you need page 10 of the module booklet, please. Um, we will not get all of the coastal processes done in one video because there's just too many of them. But we're going to make a start on erosion and weathering today. So these are all of the coastal processes. And if I can just remind you that um, we're talking about the coast as a system and all systems have inputs, outputs, stores and processes. This is uh, the processes part of that system. Okay, without further ado then, erosion. Erosion, there are different types. Can I just uh, say, you don't necessarily need to know about wave pounding. That is the optional fifth. I'm not going to play those videos in this video because it will take up too much time. But if you access the Coasts folder, um, which I'm going to share with you, basically you then have access to all of my coastal resources. And if I update them, you will always get the new version. Um, so you can access this PowerPoint. It's called Coastal Processes, nice and obvious. And you can obviously then watch the videos. Okay. You may know these from GCSE. Hydraulic action or hydraulic pressure, it doesn't matter what you call it. What happens then is your wave hits the cliff and it forces air into the crack. And as the crack gets forced into that rock, sorry, if, as the air gets forced into the crack in the rock, the crack gets opened by the air being forced in. A lot of people get muddled here. They think that hydraulic action is the water getting into the cracks in the rock. We're actually interested about the air being compressed in the cracks and that over time will um, kind of weaken the rock and force it apart. Wave pounding is optional and it is just the force of the waves hitting the cliff. Like if you were to sit in front of a cliff with a hammer and just hammer the cliff, over and over and over after a while that is going to start to make the cliff fall apart and that's what wave pounding is um abrasion sometimes called corrasion but generally abrasion is where the water moves stones and pebbles and so the water kind of hurls sediment at the cliff and that will gradually weaken the cliff the solution is the dissolving one, so you can't really draw a picture of solution, but some rocks will actually just dissolve in the water very slowly. Limestone is the perfect example. And attrition is slightly different because we're not talking about the cliff here, we're talking about the sediment in the sea. As the sediment is moved around by the water, the bits of sediment all knock into each other, and as they do, they get smaller and they get rounder. You can see here a picture of what happens to glass when it's moved around by water. So attrition is where the bits of sediment knock into each other and they get smaller and rounder over time. And what you need to do is just make sure you know the difference between those and watching those videos potentially could be quite a, a useful thing to do. So there are four, potentially five types of erosion and they are um, controlled by a number of factors that we're going to talk about in a separate video once we've worked through all of the processes. We then have weathering and weathering is going to take us a little bit longer to work our way through. This is on pages 10 and 11 of your module booklet. Okay, so at the top of the screen you've got a definition of what weathering is and this is also written on page 10. What we mean by in situ is where they are. So it's quite important for you to have an understanding of what's different between weathering and erosion. Erosion generally for, uh, involves some kind of movement. So you need the water moving or you need the stones knocking into each other. 
Weathering just happens to the rocks where they are sitting. Okay, so it's a, a more stationary process, I would say. But the most important thing that I can say is the bit in the middle of the screen. And you have this sentence on page 10. Please highlight it, underline it, asterisk it, make it brightly coloured. This is the crucial bit. Weathering weakens rocks and makes them easier to erode. There's a nice bit of alliteration there. Weathering weakens rocks, easier to erode. Um, because that's really what you need to remember about weathering. After that, you just need a little bit of detail about types, which you may have done in GCSE science. There are three main types of weathering. Chemical, where there is some kind of chemical reaction. Physical, where the rock gets weaker but it's not chemically different. And biological. Now these usually make a bit more sense via some examples. Okay, so there's biological, there's no different types of it really. Um, chemical and physical, you've got some choices. You can see you've got five options. I wouldn't recommend that you learn every single one of those because I think it's too much. I would maybe learn a couple of physical, a couple of chemical and biological. I'm going to give you a very short overview of each of them and then you can decide whether to fill them all in in the table on pages 10 and 11 or just a couple. Okay? Right, freeze thaw. Freeze thaw, water goes into the cracks in a rock, freezes. Now when water freezes it is nine percent bigger than it is as a liquid. It increases in volume when it freezes. So that makes the crack get a little bit bigger, then it melts and the process repeats, repeats, repeats and your rock breaks apart like that. Okay, so there's no chemical reaction here, it's just a physical change. Freeze, thaw, weathering and that's physical. I would however maybe learn this one because it's more pertinent to a coastline. Salt crystallisation. It makes a rock look a bit like honeycomb, uh, so sometimes it is called honeycomb weathering. What happens here is salt water hits the cliff then the sun comes out, hopefully, and the pure water gets evaporated and you get left with uh, salt on the rock. And as those salt crystals grow, they actually exert enough pressure to make the rock break apart. I know that sounds bonkers, but this is not a chemical reaction. This is the physical growth of salt crystals breaking rocks apart. So it's a physical form of weathering. Water layer weathering is much more obvious. If you've got a rock with layers and water gets into those layers, it will have the effect of separating the layers of rock away from each other. So that's physical, because it's not a chemical reaction, it's just water physically forcing the layers apart. Exfoliation, we don't get this in the UK, really. Um, exfoliation is hot, cold, hot, cold. Uh, it's often known as onion skin weathering because the rock uh, develops layers, much like an, the inside of an onion. So the rock heats up and expands, cools down and gets smaller. Contraction. Heats up, cools down. And the repetition of that means that the outer layers of the rock um, crack into pieces and then gradually over time the rock gets smaller and smaller. So that's physical. This is the last of the physical ones. Pressure release. This is a bit of a weird one to explain. If you can imagine, uh, hundreds or thousands of years ago, the rock that you're looking at on the screen had loads of layers on top of it. And those layers of rock have been weathered and eroded over the years. And then this bit has reached the surface. Because it now doesn't have... Um, anything on top of it squashing it, what that means is that the, the rock kind of breathes a sigh of relief, if you like, and because it's a solid object, it cracks. It's a little bit, it's not a very nice analogy to talk about here, but you know on Christmas Day when you've eaten too much and you might have to sort of undo a button, um, <laughs> then uh, so that your belly can expand a little bit, 
Obviously your belly doesn't crack because that would be awful, but it's that kind of analogy because it can now take up more space, it does. And as it's a solid rock, it actually cracks open. So I would probably do, if I were you, um, salt crystallization and either water layer weathering or freeze thaw for physical, because I think they're probably the easiest to explain and the most relevant. Chemical. What you have to focus on here is that there is a change in chemical structure which makes the what the what the rock weaker. There are five to choose from. If you're not a chemist or very scientifically minded, I would say carbonation is a good choice because carbonation links to the carbon cycle. We've talked quite a lot about carbonic acid in the carbon cycle, so we're kind of familiar with that. Um, and then up to you, I think, for the second one, which, whichever of those makes the most sense. Um, oxidation, you will be vaguely familiar with. When metals oxidise, if they have iron in them, they will rust. So oxidation is a process you might be sort of familiar with in metals, and it can happen in rocks if they have iron in them as well. Okay, so two of those for chemical. And then biological is plants and animals. So it's the action of plants and animals. Here we can see a rock covered in seaweed. And as that seaweed grows, very gently and very slowly, it could begin to force that rock apart and break it into smaller pieces. Mussels and limpets and things like that are all going to have a similar effect. Okay. So you can, if you wanted to, fill in that entire table and, and make the choices later. You could, if you would rather, just have the biological box and then two chemical, two physical, and that will be plenty. But what we need to remember, that the most important thing is what these processes do is they make the rocks weaker which then makes them easier to erode. And that's how those processes work together. Okay, and then the next video we do, I will focus on mass movement and we'll just go on from there. Okay, please make sure you have a look at those worksheets um, and have a go at the Kahoot just to check that things are making sense so far. And as ever, any questions at all, ladies and gents, drop me an email and I'll do my best to help you. Okay, thank you.